And welcome to another episode of Gateway or No Way. Our contestants today are a local activist and local free range lesbian, Wendy LaVedge. Wendy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show today. Glad to have you. And our other contestant is a local ruffian that we literally just found wandering off the street, Topher Kogan. Topher Kogan, do you have anything you'd like to share with the audience today? Hey, I don't think my buzzer's working. Okay, sounds great. So, Wendy, what are you playing for today? I'm playing for the betterment of humanity. Oh, so noble, such a great cause. Good luck to you. Um, Topher, what are you playing for today? Uh, yeah, I'm just here playing for my dog Rufus at home. Okay, you know what? I hope your mother's proud. And without further ado, let's get started on Gateway or No Way. So, contestants, question number one. Cocaine, gateway or no way? Gateway. Wendy LaVedge. Question number two. Oxycontin, gateway or no way? Gateway. Great. Wendy LaVedge, I love that enthusiasm. Right on the buzzer, Tover Kogan. Get it together if you want to get any points for your wonderful cause. Third question, gateway or no way, tobacco. Gateway. Again, Wendy Love Edge, right there. Fourth question, gateway or no way, bargain bin coupons. No Wendy way. Wendy Love Edge. No way. Correct again, Topher Kogan. Do you, Do you have a buzzer? You win? I don't think he has a buzzer. <sighs> My producers are telling me he does, in fact, have a buzzer, but I do not know if he knows how to use it. Final question for all the marbles in the bag on Gateway or No Way. Are you ready for this question? But before we get to that question, I want to tell you that we are sponsored by Green Zone TV. Stay informed, stay empowered, stay in the green zone. Okay, and our final question is on Gateway or no way, cannabis, gateway or no way? When I get lost, it's like a whole lot of love. Find me out and love. Can light the way, not a dream, no child. This is Wendy LaVedge. And this is Topher Kogan. We're in the green zone. Are you in the green zone? Are we in the green zone? We are. But how do we get in the green zone? How did they get? How did they get in the green yes. zone? Yes. Well, the green zone is where community, activism, science, and art meet cannabis. There we go. And that's how you get in the green zone. So everyone can get in the green zone. Exactly. Welcome to the Green Zone. We're going to continue our myth busting this week by answering the question, is cannabis a gateway drug? Spoiler, it's Topher not. Kogan and I went out on the street in Fayetteville, Arkansas to the Fayetteville Farmers Market and the University of Arkansas to ask citizens this very question. Is cannabis a gateway drug? Would you be willing to answer some questions for a TV show? So um, I'm Wendy Loveedge from the Green Zone TV, and we're here asking people some questions about cannabis. Um, do you think cannabis is a gateway drug? 
Um, I'm not really sure. I don't really know a lot about cannabis. I mean, I've never done it, but I don't think it's really a gateway drug. I think there are benefits to it, but there are also, like, you know, negative parts of it as well. But I don't really see it as a gateway. Okay, excellent. Thanks so much for no talking problem. to me. Um, do you think cannabis is a gateway drug? No, I do not. Um, do, did you uh, come to that conclusion from reading articles or something that you learned in school, or how did you come to that conclusion? Well, I learned a lot about it in school, actually, and uh, I don't think that at all from research studies that have shown it's, it has actually less harmful substances within the drug than alcohol. Absolutely. Thanks so much for speaking yeah. with me today. So do you think cannabis is a gateway drug to harder drugs and alcohol? No, I don't. How about you? Do you think cannabis is a gateway drug? No, I believe cigarettes are. I think there's I know. studies done on that, actually. Sugar? Right. <laughs> sugar is a, is a is gateway it? drug. How about sugar? Sugar is a gateway sugar drug a gateway for sure. Drug. Well, it's so addictive, <laughs> yeah, isn't, yeah, it? Yeah. isn't it? Do you think cannabis is addictive? No. Well, thanks so much for speaking with me today. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Do you think that it's a gateway drug to other drugs? No, I know that's a popular belief, but I personally don't think so. Do you think that cannabis is a gateway drug to other drugs? Oh, I can answer that. No. No, matter of fact, I think it is, it helps fight addiction of other drugs. Thank you so much. And now, let's see what science has to say about this very important question. Welcome to the Green Zone, Dr. Uma. Welcome to be here, Wendy. So uh, let's talk a little bit about cannabis as a gateway drug. Is it, in fact, a gateway drug? I have not an entry drug, but an exit drug. And it's really interesting, if you look back at the history of where this concept came about, about gateway drugs, it goes back to the days of Harry and Esther, and when they coined the term gateway drug. Mm-hmm. Right, back to Harry A. Slinger and the drug war, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They tried to associate cannabis as the gateway for heroin and cocaine and the people that used this medication back then related it to murder and death. And this is how they coined the concept of being a gateway drug, or the drug is what I mm -hmm. refer it as. It's really myth. And we know that when patients really offered cannabis, they would prefer that and really don't want to be on other medications. Right. And I've called it an exit from not pharmaceutical than narcotics. I've added alcohol and nicotine to my list, the list of medications that we're getting people off of because it's not a gateway drug. I want to emphasize that it is not a gateway drug, it is an exit drug. And I've been called a drug and I've come for 10 years because we're seeing patients getting off of pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. narcotics, facing an opioid pandemic, Wendy, and it's killing patients all over the world. So, Dr. Uma, I have heard you say over the last several years cannabis is an exit drug, and you would think by now people would understand that. And in your practice, do you, do you see people coming off of um, not only, you mentioned pharmaceuticals, but, you know, using other substances, do you see that they just stick with the cannabis once they really get using it as medicine? Absolutely. This is the biggest misinformation don't understand is that most patients are not offered and doctors or hospitals, university, insurance company, Medicare, Medicaid, and this is all government driven. And at the end of the day, it's insurance companies that are paying drugs and cannabis schedule one. Mm -hmm. So it's still illegal. And only third states offer it to patients. Right. And patients have an actual doctor like myself, or even if they have willing to write the patients, many patients get the guide and the follow-up that they need. And I see patients in three months 
and every six after I serve. So we're following them. We're seeing them for monthly patient care support meeting. And this is very, very important because every patient that uses cannabis is very different. Mm -hmm. And one thing will tell you something worked for them today, it doesn't work today. Right. Something that works for the same product for the same patient. Mm -hmm. Because we keep changing, and this is what's the beauty in it, is that everybody learns how to self-care, right. and it's not health care. And what we're seeing with our patients is that they've been put on medication that have been put on not one year, two years, we're talking 30 years, mm -hmm. or long patients that have not been in their medication. And I'm able to slowly taper them off mm -hmm. and improving their quality of life. And I call it a gateway drug for better quality of life. <laughs> If you that's, want to call it a gateway drug. Right. That's what it's a gateway to. I love that. Um, and I love it that you follow your patients. You know, a lot of times with these cannabis recommendations, the doctor just certifies the patient and may not see them again until next year, right? But you're actually taking care of the patient just like if, you know, let's say someone is diabetic, they have to go every few months to get to, to be seen Absolutely. and examined. And that's how you're handling it like true medical doctor. Thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. It's only about 45 out there, when, And I want people to know that the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine, and I'm one of those doctors that certified to be yes. a cannabis medicine specialist. There's lots of doctors that write recommendations, but they're not certified with the American Academy of Medicine. And so you should think, are you certified mm -hmm. and are you aware of the American Academy of Medicine? Right. And that's that's excellent. Thank you for doing that. And that way patients know what they're getting. And it's interesting because a patient will research a new um, primary doctor, right? What kind of doctor is this? How, but with cannabis, what happens is they just want to get that certification. So frequently they'll go to any doctor that will do it. But it, you're not getting the same quality, whereas with you, you're certified as a cannabinoid medicine physician, and people really should look for that. Thank you for bringing that up. And absolutely. Ask this of colleagues of mine. Would you ever give a, a blood pressure prescription and say, speak when it's here? Right, right. You no, never do no, that. they or wouldn't. Our new mm -hmm. diagnosed diabetic mm -hmm. would never say, here's your insulin, bye-bye. Right, right. We'd never do that. And we're doing that with the plant right now. If we're going to treat this as a doctor-patient care relationship, there should be follow-up. Patients should be demanding this as well. And if they're not getting it, I mean, this is where you're bringing up the information so that at least they can get the correct information. Yes, yes. And make sure that it's not misinformation. Right. And understand. There's no one for everybody. Right. And, you know, by having this conversation and having people see it, I think that helps. we got to end the stigma when people stop looking at it as a gateway drug and instead as a medicine, then we're, we're moving. We're, we'll be getting somewhere, won't we? <laughs> Absolutely. I have to pro They're going to call it a gateway drug. Let's call it a gateway drug to being drug-free for prescription medication. Mm -hmm. a, a gateway drug, better quality of life, getting a gateway drug to be more engaged with your family. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank God you. God bless it. Now, this is not an infant drug. It's an infant drug from pharmaceuticals, narcotics, alcohol, and, and cigarettes, right? And nicotine. Absolutely. So exit drug from pharmaceuticals, narcotics, alcohol, and nicotine. I love it. You got it, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless and have a great day. You Until too. Soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Can you can can cannabis, Myth Busters? Can you can can cannabis, cannabis, Myth Busters?
And now, in our activism segment, we're going to hear from cannabis activist from Georgia, James Meisner. What's up, everybody? James Meisner here, founder at One Plant. That's right, One Plant, your favorite place to stop for all your latest news, educational resources, and the many uses and benefits of cannabis every single day, not to mention some pretty awesome hemp products. So check us out at facebook.com forward slash One Plant is all we need, or check us out on the web at oneplantisallweneed.com. And thank you guys for being so One Plant United. So let's talk about medical cannabis here in the state of Georgia. Did you even know Georgia had a medical cannabis law? Well, we do, but unfortunately we're not considered a medical cannabis state. Why is that? Well, we got a flashback to the beginning to find out. Way back on April 16th, 2015, our illustrious Governor Nathan Deal signed into effect HB1 or the Haley's Hope Act. What this act effectively did was it allowed doctors to be registered through the state health department and patients to then register through the state health department to acquire a state ID card to allow them to possess up to 20 fluid ounces of low THC oil only. 5% maximum THC. No threshold on CBD, but 5% is the most you can have. There is no other forms of ingestion, oil only. <clears throat> the conditions uh, that were listed at that time were as follows. Cancer. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, seizures when related to epilepsy and head trauma, multiple sclerosis, or MS, Crohn's disease, mitochondrial disease, Parkinson's disease, and sickle cell disease. Now, mind you, the legislation reads that all of these conditions must be severe or end stage, meaning that every single patient must be suffering and or dying in order to receive this life-saving medicine. That's pretty sad if you ask me. But wait, there's more. Not only do these patients have to be suffering and dying in order to get this medicine, but the state provides no safe access. These patients are now forced to be criminals. That's right, there's no safe access. So after you pay for a doctor, pay for a state ID card, the state then tells you, good luck in finding your medicine. These patients are forced to leave the state and bring back oils by violating state and other federal and other state laws. Now, for some reason in states like Georgia and probably a lot of other back assward states down here in the South and states that have no ballot initiative, on election years, controversial bills just don't get seen or heard from. I wonder why that is. So in 2016, Georgia saw no medical cannabis advancements or any cannabis law signed that year, unfortunately. So let's fast forward to May 9th, 2017, and Governor Nathan Deal signs SB 16, Senate Bill 16. Basically, all this did was add some conditions. It was a low THC conditions change. It also changed some verbiage in the uh, laws, um, but the conditions added were as follows. Tourette syndrome, only if it's severe. Autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, only if you're 18 years or older, and also if it's severe. Epidromolosis bullosa, which is a rare skin disease. Alzheimer's, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or AIDS, mind you, not HIV, and peripheral neuropathy. There were some other verbiage changes, like I said, and some, way, and some changes in how doctors must report to the state health department. Also, they added reciprocity. Reciprocity means that if you have a medical card in another state, you can come to Georgia and you can get Georgia's low THC oil, nothing else. So if you have a card from California, you don't get to bring flour to Georgia. You get low THC oil. But it is some reciprocity, which is a good change. And that's about all we got in 2016. Moving right along to the most recent legislative cycle that just ended, and on May 3rd, 2018 of this year, Governor Nathan Deal signed into effect HB 65, which was actually just another low THC conditions change. It created a joint study commission on low THC oil access, or how the state might, in the future, decide to cultivate and provide safe access. So basically, a bunch of politicians are getting together to get paid to study more about cannabis. This is like the same old song and dance or what? Uh, well, anyway, it also um, added two more conditions, which is something that we worked very hard to lobby to get here in the state, and those conditions were are as follows. Uh, Post-traumatic stress syndrome or PTSD, you must be 18 years old or over to uh, register for this condition. 
And the other condition is intractable pain. Intractable pain is defined as a pain that has a cause that cannot be removed and for which, according to generally accepted medical practice, the full range of pain, ma pain management modalities appropriate for the patient has been used for a period of at least six months without adequate results or with intolerable side effects. So basically, you have to be suffering, dying, you have to go through six months of treatment of toxic pharmaceutical drugs, and then you might qualify if your doctor says so, right? No, it's not reasonable. And frankly, I don't believe it's constitutional either. And neither do at least four other medical patients who have filed a lawsuit against Jeff Sessions, the United States government, and the DEA to argue the constitutionality of the scheduling of cannabis under the Controlled Substances Act. Those patients are Marvin Washington, an ex-NFL player, Jose Bellin, a veteran with the United States Army, Alexis Bortel, a 12-year-old medical cannabis refugee who has had to leave Texas to go to Colorado to get the medicine that she needs, and Jager Cote, who is a Georgia patient, who is also represented by his father, Sebastian Cote, who is also his caregiver. Now, in this lawsuit, the judge actually just recently dismissed this case. But the good thing that came out of this was that he did acknowledge the medical efficacy and stated that he did see that these patients were helped by cannabis. Um, ultimately, the dismissal came because he said that these, these, this lawsuit didn't go through the proper channels. Um, to reschedule cannabis, you have to petition the DEA, or it has to be done through Congress. Well, if you know the history of cannabis and the petition process, it's happened numerous times in the past, and it's never, never followed through. So while these people didn't actually do it, it's been done ultimately many times. And a recent update shows that these patients actually did file an appeal, and it was recently granted. So we will see an appeal on this case in the very near future, so stay tuned. Well, that is your wrap-up for medical cannabis in the state of Georgia uh, I hope you are following it, and I hope that in the future we can all get together and we can move this issue forward because we need safe access here in the state of Georgia, and currently it is against our constitutional rights to be denied this tree of life. Already done science, community, and activism. What's the fourth thing? Oh, Drew Costello's here. That must mean it's time for art.
Time to be alive, people. But a crazy time to be alive, people. Seven shots. They call me hey. Chit. Reality rap. You now in tune with that John Hayes. All day repping that beast coast. Conversate, blow concentrates. Whole team smelling like weed smoke. Now state to state, I've been rolling deep. One MC repping can of fam. Northern lights with that OG. Now who Try and go gram for gram, woo. Now I'm feeling right, allow me to walk on the ceiling. ceiling. From the minute I started this rhyme, and I was focused on making a million. Taking care of the family first. We tighten it like vice grips. Perform on the stage when the night hits. In the morning, wake up, get right. Yes, like, got a couple more, then twax them. I might just uh -huh. never catch the boy slacking though It inspires with the ballpoint rights next And they calling me haze for a reason And now I don't have to move peace Like you could be hot all you want Or just like a sauna I remain stable at freeze okay. Get frostbitten See the look up on the face when they cough different uh, Real MCs, he's authentic You can tell by the way we walked up in With Harlequin from that rising Juice dripping straight glob That bud sticking, that buzz kicking Like how many grams you got, man? God when I step into place, they told me to go and get wow A couple of grams to the heavens. Uh -huh. With me, you know it gets cloudy. Yeah. It is what it is. Whenever I'm spitting, I'm hitting the stage with a passion. passion. So tell all them haters to pipe down. Cause Connecticut's ill is this rapping. I'm gone. Well, that about does it for our four myth-busting episodes of The Green Zone TV. Does cannabis kill brain cells? No. no. Does cannabis lead to weight gain? No. no. Does cannabis cause you to be lazy and or stupid? No. no. Is cannabis a gateway drug? No. no. Thanks for joining us on The Green Zone. Till next time, live into your greatness. Stay elevated. Be informed. And stay, stay in the, the green zone. zone.